All right, so this isn't really, again, same thing to the Canon, uh, the, the PowerShot A520 video. This is not necessarily old technology, but it is technology that is relatively dated for uh, now standards. So I'm about to pick up the phone for this one and move over my switch case because I use that as a phone stand. But this here is actually the pocket chip. So this, this chassis is actually the whole pocket chip. So it'll boot up into that and then there'll be a little, it'll boot up again with a little speech bubble over it. The light wasn't so bright. And you'll see it'll load. But this thing has a full size keyboard. You know, you got your tab, shift, function, alt, control, and these two buttons here actually serve as a space bar. You got escape. This, these four buttons here are actually a directional pad. You got all your numbers, other things, and then up top, you actually have some GPIO headers which are actually really nice because they connect perfectly into the chip computer in the back. Those are actually the quote unquote secret like debug pins. And then you got the battery. Uh, yeah, 3.7 volt battery. Can't remember how much it actually is, but yeah, this little thing here, pretty nice. You got the terminal where you can do Linuxy things, your chip, and then Pico 8, which is actually a fantasy console that I, I adore. It is a nice little thing. You have the Get Help, which is basically just the, the company that did this. They made a little thing on it. Write, browse files, and make music. So before I actually get further, I mean, that's basically it. And then you got, you know, your Wi-Fi and your settings and the like. But going to the power menu. Shut down sleep, reboot, and flash. I'm just going to shut it down. Because this video is actually a little interesting. So I'm bringing it back over the switch case so I can use it to prop up my phone. The company that made the pocket chip, Next Thing Co., as seen whoop, right down there. So Next Thing Co. had a problem, I think. This is, this is what I've watched from other videos. Right? So I'm just kind of echoing things they said, but in brief, I'm actually just going to pull the, the chip computer out itself so that you can really see this thing. Okay. So this is really just it. This is actually the whole brains of the operation. Obviously you have your, your two rows of headers. I think this is supposed to be a composite connection and this is a USB and you have micro USB for charging the battery. Or for putting it in debt, uh, de what's it called? I think it's called fell mode, where, where is it? You can put this pin here into any of the ground connections, and you basically set it up into a flashing mode, so you can flash new software onto it. So, next thing, Co. had an issue. Oh, you can also see the the very silly and funny doge thing. I think, I can't remember, I can't really, on the camera you can't really see it, but, oh, what does it say? Oh, it says, such pass, NTC. So, very much a relic for 2016. So this thing here, right, pocket chip, how do you, this is actually the chip computer. This is the pocket chip. The chassis is the pocket chip. This is the chip computer. So I think the problem they had was they couldn't manufacture enough. I might, I might be getting this wholly wrong, but they, the, the guys at Next Thing Co. were supposedly taking the money and half of it was like, I think it was like, they took the money and ran. But then they had like some actual products release. So the pocket chip itself, um, unfortunately is kind of a relic because there weren't that many pocket chips actually made because they ran out of parts really freaking quickly the chip computers though they're still supposedly there's a company that still sells them 
I can't remember. I like it. Apparently, it's this like liquidation where they couldn't pay back. I can't remember what what they did, but they couldn't pay back something. So they were like, "Oh no, we have to, you know, do whatever." So unfortunately, there weren't that many made. You can still get them. I'm not sure if they're real pocket chips or chip computers, but um, in a sense, right, these things are really, really weird because it's Next Thing Co. went defunct because they ran out of money, but people that made orders. There were only, I think, it was like 600 or 800 of these things. These things, I think, I might be wrong, that were actually ever made. So it really left a lot of the purchasers of the original Kickstarter asking a lot of questions about what actually went wrong. And then, obviously, there are videos that explain it a lot better than I do. But this here, this little guy here, is in such a condition that if I needed to reflash it, I don't know how to do it. Because, unfortunately, there are a lot of guides that either don't do it fully right or get it completely wrong. Now, I've gotten close before, and I think what I need to do is just give it another shot. Because I have actually two of these. This one here is the one that works. I bought it from one that just had a dead battery. I asked the guy if prior it could power up. And he said yes. It powered up original, like normal. And you know it popped into the pocket chip OS. The other one I got. I was like oh it just needs to be reflashed. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, spoiler it was a big problem. Because I still don't have that one reflashed because of how old these things are the documentation is all gone because when the company went down so did everything they used to do they they basically just unfortunately vanished and then i think one of the other guys that made this i don't know who but it was one of, I can't remember what his name was, but he basically tried selling the pocket chip just under a different name, and then people found it out, and then nobody bought it. I, I would have to actually go back to the video and, and see what it was, but I, I'll find it somewhere. I'll probably just, you know, drop it in the, the description. But when I figure it out, when I figure out how to flash the other one, I'll basically just have two fully functional pocket chips that work as intended. However, that's the other issue is they're not really that impressive. These came out to compete with the Raspberry Pi 2. Unfortunately, very shortly after, they released, I think, the Pi Zero, the very first few Pi Zeros, which killed this thing completely, right? So, this was actually supposed to be a, a Pi competitor, initially, because of, you know, all the GPIO headers, all the stuff you could do with it, all, all the stuff you could do with it, in air quotes, when the Pi had a micro SD card slot, this has, I think, 4 gigs of internal storage, which, not that impressive, because, you know, you could put up as much as, I think for the original Pi 3s, though, you can only get up to 256 initially. Obviously, with, you know, recent technology, you can get up to, like, the one and a half terabyte micro SD cards working with it. Um, yeah, the, these things weren't really that great for their time, right? They sold for a couple bucks a piece, I think. It was, like... I have to go back to the original things, but I'm pretty sure these things sell for like seven bucks a piece. But now, unfortunately, they may not have been seven, actually. They may have been a little more. I can't remember. But these things came out around 2016. And a 
again, it was like the Pi 2 and then the Raspberry Pi Zero. And then a little after that, the Pi 3, Pi 4, and now recently the Pi 5. Really, I mean, as soon as the Pi Zero came out, this thing was left in the dust, right? The Pi Zero had a lot more functionality, had a micro SD card slot. You could, you know, expand with it. There wasn't much you could do with this compared to a Pi because of, obviously, just the open source community. This, however, yes, being open source, however, comma, there isn't much as you can do with it, right? Now, this is actually, this could be flashed with the desktop chip. This could be flashed with a debug chip uh, image. This could be flashed, again, with the pocket chip image. So there was a handful of images you could put onto this because the company, that, I think it's, again, liquidation, the liquidation company that sell these things um, they, I think they come pre-flashed with the desktop version and then you can use it from there. However, again, to really utilize it, you would need to expand that storage, you know, get a USB hub, get enough power draw and, and pray that you're, you know, actually getting the proper amount of storage. But. I mean, this is just a little quirky thing of long ago. It had big shoes to fill. Fell hilariously short. But, oh my god, there's so much to talk about this. But not too much to actually talk about. Because this thing was very short-lived. Because, again, it had that Kickstarter. The guy is kind of... They, they built some products, but they kind of ran with the money after that. And, you know, I don't know what really happened. But that being said, I mean, that's just really it for this. Because there, there's the, the whole pocket chip and the next thing co is just a rabbit hole in and of itself. So with that being said, I guess that's just it for now. I have to actually you know, do the research real quick. And I'll probably make... I might not make another one. But eventually, I'm gonna, you know, see what else is new about this. And I'll post an update about getting the other one working. I would actually have to label them, though. You know, chip one, chip two, or something. So, with that being said, I guess that's just it. I'm gonna stop yapping for now. See you guys in the next one.